are the um, faculty of business. He is a 21, more than 21 year of experience in oil and gas industry and specialization in energy and project management. Dr. Ali is holding a PhD in project management and master's in engineering management from University of Putra, Malaysia and also bachelor's degree in chemical engineering uh, from al Warsaw University, Iran. He is also working now as a senior lecturer in Lincoln University College. Please welcome Dr. Ali. Ladi. And Dr. Rosaini is specialized in economics. She has master's degree in 2008 from University of Uttara Malaysia and also awarded PhD from University of Science Malaysia. In also before that, Lord Lincoln, he served as lecturer in School of International Trade of Economics, Guangdong University of Foreign Studies, located in Guangzhou, China, and has specialized in economics, she has economics and business study. So also she has more than I think 17 years of teaching experience. So we also welcome Madam Rosaini and all the participants. Are requested to make your presentation within five minutes, followed by two minute question and answer session, and we restrict the session part of the participant within ten minutes. Thank you. Please hand over the session to our chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pada. Regarding the PPT, please come on my Madam Chair and Please communicate with Mr. Nijan here. Before I uh, ask the morning, and you know. Can you pass the Please come on the dance. Who is the past presenter? Past presenter. In the program, past presenter, who is the name? Shankar. Please come. Shankar or Cedric Alinham. Okay, let me call first, at least I don't know who was your okay. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. How about DJ? DJ is here? No. Uh, third one, Tin Han. Tun Han is here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Please come. Uh,
the problem is that uh, there is a, a significant pressure to look at the whole body for the bigger challenges like COVID-19 and the conclusion. Even this, my study is able to assess the financial resilience of the selected private market PMR applying the video analysis at FME. FME is a traditional key used in the engineering and is adapted here to identify the potential financial risk and prioritize the mitigation strategy. Traditional risk assessment approach has proven <coughs> sufficient in addressing the complex and involving the risk in the Myanmar all time apparent. FMEA here offers a systematic approach to identify the potential failure and prioritizing the risk, providing the deeper insight into the financial stability of the bank. By adapting FMEA to the banking context, this study introduced a novel perspective on managing financial risk in emerging markets where traditional tools may not capture the full spectrum of the challenges. Financial resilience is the crucial for the bank, which and the economic channel like recession, market tap down, political chaos, all this and that. So the literature review is mainly focused on the key further affecting the resilience given the adequacy Liquidity management, asset quality, and stability, risk management practice, regulatory deployment, microeconomic condition, monitoring the entry rate, inflation, and the resi resilience. We have to monitor the whole nation. FME has been analyzed banking, providing a novel approach to risk assessment in this area. Objective and question. Research, my paper research question are uh, what are the primary risk to factor influence the power and stability of the central bank in Myanmar? How can FME can utilize to evaluate and prioritize these risks within the banking center? And what enhancement can be implemented in risk management practice based on the FME outcome to strengthen the financial stability? My hypothesis is political distortion and economic difficulty significantly evaluate the risk level of the private banks in Myanmar, affecting the key performance metric. The implication, the application of the FME will reveal the critical failure point and offer a more comprehensive understanding of the risk factor impacting the financial resilience. Indicating the FME with traditional financial metric will strengthen the risk management strategy and enhance the overall financial stability of the private banks. Methodology. My study focused on the six private banks in Myanmar, selected based on their market share and popularity and the availability of the completeness of the financial data from 2018 to 2023. Financial data were collected from the audited taken statements of balance sheet, ensuring the accuracy and reliability of these analysis. FME was applied to analyze failure mode across the 10 key financial ratio, assessing the severity. S, occurrence, O, and reduction to, to calculate the risk. D, priority number, <coughs> RPM, risk priority number. By, by multiplying the severity S, occurrence, O, and reduction to calculate the risk. D, we are going to get the priority number RPM, and we are going to assess it, how the risk of the bank financial position at the time of the, the making the risk assessment. The selection of financial ratio was based on the relevance of the bank performance, stability, including the indicator like ROE, ROE, capital adequacy, CDR, and so on. Uh, the methodology has also included a competitive analysis of the risk profile across the banks, providing the insight into how different institutions manage financial stress and identify the area for the improvement. And this is the, the FME process. Collect the clean financial data, evaluate risk pressure, assess the summary number and occurrence, number of number of number of occurrence by referring the historic data of the city bank, and set the detection number and calculate the risk priority number and formulate the risk strategy and manage the strategy as required by the top management of the each bank. These are the cylinder ratio of the bank, and cylinder ratio, which are mostly can impact and can can make these and they are to be the financial stability and the, the performance of the private banks. 
the reset. Risk priority number of RPA can be calculated for each financial risk group across the plan of the severity, occurrence, detection, or the potential financial risk. High RPA and ADA, ADA are the significant risk that require the immediate attention to prevent the potential financial instability and distress. The table and chest are summarized in the RPA process, highlighting the bank risk group by a prime. Pinpointing the critical area where the strategy intervention are necessary. This is the calculation of the, the 10 financial ratio for six years and and the right bar two quarter are the severity number, organic number and detection by multiplying these variables, we are getting these uh, risk parameter, risk priority number RP for the six years. Based on the this calculation result, we can formulate this strategy for specific strategy for the specific bank as required by the confidence manager. And the pressure of the reserve bank with the high RPM for ROE, ROE, debt equity ratio, a particularly vulnerable to the financial stability, signaling the potential issue in profitability, profitability and leverage management. My study will be a significant variability in the risk group finding between the bank, suggesting that some institutions are better equipped to manage financial stress due to the difference management practice and risk distribution. My finding and as goal the importance of the targeted risk management strategy tailored to the each bank unique risk profile and sure in that resources are allocated efficiently to mitigate the most risk present bank. And this is the RPN number and the interpretation column. You can see these uh, the strategy formulation for each specific bank as, as needed, as required. Let's say it is under 75 RPM is to be solved and 75 to 125 is considered a bit and easier, above the one, 125 is solved. Need to take attention immediately, which means discussion. The application of RPA in this study has identified critical failure points that may not have been captured through the traditional risk assessment method of offering a more detailed risk assessment. The result aligned with the existing literature confirming the high leverage and low access return of indicator of the financial district and banking sector. Comparative analysis with other banks in the region highlight both government, risk factor, and the institution specific challenges providing a basis for bank making and strategic decision making. This decision also is proved implication of these findings for the regulatory compliance and infrastructure finance and finance emphasizing the need for the, the strong risk management framework. My study contribute to the broader disclosure of the financial recipient of any insight that can be applied in other emerging market facing similar challenges with these a key tradition. Predicate application. Private banks must enhance capital buffer and monitor profitability metrics to ensure the law and stability and sustainability. Policy maker can use these findings to develop regulation that support banking sector stability during the period of the socio-political point. Integrating FMEA into the existing risk management frameworks offer a proactive approach to the identifying and mitigating the risk before this escalates. My study inside are very well for the improving resilience not only in the Myanmar but also in other emerging markets facing the similar challenges like political to more, political chaos and any other uh, unstable of the condition, economic situation. Limitation, future reset. This study is limited to six private men. A six year period which may not be captured the broader trend in the sector of emerging risk that could be a further findings. In Myanmar, not every trend are disclosed they are financial statement to the public. So the, as, the, the variable data, as much as I guess, is only six months or six years. The future research could expand the scope into the increased movement and longer time by allowing the more comprehensive analysis of the risk factor and resilience. In covering the advanced economic model and the quali qualitative data from the industry expert could possibly the, provide the deeper insight into the in the action between the financial ratio and financial credit factor in such situation. 
There is also the potential for the cooperative strategy across the different regions to understand how the regulatory environment and economic conditions affect financial risk management strategy in various banking sector. And conclusion, my study demonstrates the applicability of the FMEA model in assessing and prioritizing the risk in the banking sector, providing the variable insight into the financial stability of the private banks in Myanmar. The finding highlight the need for the proactive risk strategy to mitigate the impacts of economic and political instability, ensuring that the banks can manage operation, resilience, and sustainability. By introducing the FME more into the banking sector, my research contributed to a deeper understanding of the financial resilience in emerging market and offer a framework that can be applied to the similar context globally. And this is kind of my uh, sharing my insight with my research. And um, thank you. And I'm inviting the, the question from the Facebook. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. King. Very good presentation. Okay, my question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. What is the main problem? It's about this title, actually. Why you choose this title? Uh, because uh, currently, as, as you may know, uh, my country, Myanmar, uh, has uh, an instability of the economic uh, background and is a political chaos. So, uh, private banking sector has been impacted significantly and, uh, with this and same as the Okay. So, uh, their sustainability is significantly related to the country future economy. So I have to focus on this issue and I have to measure the risk the risk and the other related risks can be interfaced by, by the private bank. So then I choose this idea and by using the FMPA model to evaluate how they are closing to the collapse or how can they <laughs> with these current situation in the in, in spite of in these uh, political instability and current instability in Asia. So that's why I choose this idea and to make it a deep uh, research and finding and try to formulate the necessary uh, strategy for policy maker, bank management, all the stakeholders are concerning with this the sustainability of the private bank. That's one. Okay, good. Okay, when we talk about your analysis, which is uh, 2018 to 2023, right? Yes. Which is uh, started from the COVID-19 and also before and after the COVID-19. Oh, okay. So what uh, is the risk factor about your analysis? Okay. 2018 is the two year uh, preceding the COVID-19. Okay. And 2030 is two years after the military coup. Okay, so two years, two years, two years, three, two into three years is the sixth year uh, of the two-night study I'm going to make in this uh, study and session. So, socio political challenges I especially refer to the COVID 19 epidemic and military coup or and political changes. So two years preceding these are socio-political challenge and two years after the socio main major socio-political challenges. I mean that that's been uh, covering the, all, all these periods and I, I believe that the result will be covered all the necessary things I have to follow. Wow, very good analysis about that. Okay. Uh, actually I would like to ask him about the gap. The gap is uh, the gap. Uh, the gap. Yeah. Yes, of course, huge gap. <laughs> because very few researchers are focusing on this kind of the, this is a, uh, uh, risk related uh, uh, research before. So I, my only research may or may not be able to cover all these gap we we have before. Because very few researchers are focused on the, the riskiness of the, the private banks of the Myanmar before. 
I have find out for several several academy website and very few people I have found. So the girl is a country itself. Yes. Okay. okay. Any question from the floor? Any question from the floor? Please. Please. Any question from the floor? Yes. How confusing are all these people in the process of the entire country? Since of the least time of the time. So that in Malaysia, the government, some banks guarantee the return of the country. Is there such a measure in the Burmese bank, the private bank, and the uh, okay, uh, I'm asking this question as a layman, not as an academician, because I haven't gone into this gap and all that. I just said, how confident are Burmese people in putting their money in banks, in private banks, as a deposit? How confident are they based on the risk factors and all that? Is the money guaranteed by the private banks if anything happens? Because there's Continuous political, you know, mutiny unrest in Burma. So, how confident are the people there in? Okay, uh, you are you are asking about the confinement level. Yeah, confinement the level level of level. the investors. Yes, is that? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes because uh, uh, if me, if me, I say is uh, they are confined. Okay, uh, not in Myanmar. Okay, every single country on this planet. The, the depositor of fire and art could possibly depend on the stability of their related specific government, regulation, CBN, regulatory organization, and then the root, the, the, the stonic and the robustness of the, their regulation over the private bank, it will be dependent on that. So, uh, for this case, the confidence of the depositor may be may not be high, like other country with this uh, away from the, the chaos political situation. Okay, so one and instability and these uh, political chaos are uh, can be the some sort of the somewhat uh, a few confidence on these uh, public bank are uh, occurred within the. Uh, Stay over and in the bullseye. Okay. Any question? Uh, just one question regarding the. Do you think that we face any uh, challenges to access the, the data in the very fast? Sorry? Here, here. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, one question for you. Uh, do you think that you have any uh, challenges 